Hello everyone, Ken here back with another video for you. Today I'm giving you my three steps for learning programming for data science. Now programming is probably one of the largest barriers for getting into this field, especially if you're coming from a business or an economics background, you might not have any exposure to programming at all. In your statistics classes in school, you probably either used SPSS, Stata, MATLAB, or one of these statistic packages that aren't really that commonly used in the field. Everything is moving more towards Python and R, and these are my steps for getting some aptitude in either of those languages. So I believe computer science concepts are integral to data science, but to get started, you can really get by at the most basic level of understanding. Going forward, these are my three steps for building you some foundation in a programming language of your choice, for getting you some understanding of how these are used in practice, and getting you started using these in actual projects. If you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. It helps me with the algorithm to grow my channel. And if you wanna see more content at the intersection of data science and sports analytics, please consider subscribing. So my first step is to get a basic understanding of one language. I would choose one. Generally, I recommend Python. I think Python is a great starter language. It's pretty simple to understand. It's fairly close to plain English. Now there's plenty of great resources online. I personally used Code Academy. I mean, this was maybe five years ago, six years ago when I started on this journey. So that platform might have changed a little bit. I've also included in the description below a list of a couple different free online places to learn Python that I think are generally pretty good. When learning the fundamentals of any programming language, you really have to understand a couple key things and that will give you enough understanding to be able to apply this to data science. So you have to be able to understand variables, you have to be able to understand loops, you have to be able to understand functions, logical operators, if and or statements. Uh, some understanding of objects are also relevant. And then finally, you have to be able to really understand functions and packages. When you're doing data science using Python, a lot of the things that you're actually um, implementing are already built by other people in the form of packages. So you're just recycling some of their work to get some insight out of your data. So again, it's really important to understand how to use these different packages that are out there. You should also have some understanding of basic data structures like arrays, linked lists, etc. I think that those are generally taught in a lot of these different free online courses. My second step after you've built some solid foundation in programming is for you to go on Kaggle.com. So Kaggle.com is a data science hub where they host a lot of different data sets and different data scientists, different analysts, people that are interested in the field can post their code and solve either challenges or just um, show their work on different data sets. Now this is an awesome place because you can see how other data scientists or other people that are interested in the field have actually solved these problems or analyzed these data sets. So you can go into what are known as kernels and you can see all of their code there. This is a great way you can just walk through their code and see how they analyze different things. You also get a feeling of what this code actually does, what the different packages do, etc. So I would recommend doing this as much as you can. Just doing code review, seeing how other people analyze data because eventually you will pick these things up. So while you are doing this, you should also take note of the packages that people use. So you'll probably see people use pandas and numpy a lot, scikit-learn, uh, scipy, tensorflow, xgboost, these types of things. And whenever you see one of these packages and you don't know what it does, you should go look into the documentation for it. So almost all of these packages that are used really commonly have great documentation. And in order to find this, you just type in to Google pandas documentation or something like that and you should be able to find where they define all of the parameters, they explain all of these uh, methods extremely, extremely well. And that is how you can understand and learn what these things are used for. I can't stress this step enough. I think that you should 
I, you know, I even do this constantly to try and learn new things. I understand how different visuals are built through using this process. And it is really good to understand how other people code, how other people do data science. That helps you grow a ton. Now, you can also look on GitHub. You can see where people have uh, made repos for their code there. That's also in a little bit different format. That's a bit better structured. That's how code in production perhaps should be. So I would explore that resource as well. And then finally in this step, I put together a couple of data science fundamentals videos where I walk through some data exploration, data cleaning, etc. And I would consider going through those. It has very basic starter code uh, after you've had some fundamentals in Python. Uh, those are again, a free resource on my YouTube. I just am hoping that that is a good kickstart to learning this process as well. Now, finally on to step three, which is my favorite one, and it's probably the most fun one. This is where you actually go on Kaggle or you find these data sets and you start doing projects on your own. You've seen how a lot of other people analyze this data, and now it's your turn to use what you've learned from the basic programming and studying how other people code to actually create your own unique insights. Now, this can be a little bit intimidating and you can, you're pretty much always going to run into some troubles or your code doesn't run or something along those lines, but that's a normal part of the process. You should be failing. You should be struggling with this. That's what makes you grow. And it's really important in this step, not necessarily to ask for help immediately. You should be trying to kind of struggle through this code to get it to run. You should be looking on Google or on Stack Overflow. Uh, for you know, 5, 15, 20 minutes to see if someone else has also run into this problem. I can almost guarantee you that someone else has already run into the same coding challenge or problem that you've had. And it's a good thought exercise. It's good practice to try and find these solutions on your own. Obviously, these steps are easier said than done, and I expect them to take a good amount of time to really go through and get to a acceptable level of understanding of coding from this. Now, I do think that this, from my opinion, is, is the best approach, again, for learning coding for data science. If I were to learn it for software engineering or for some other purpose, I would definitely go about it a different route, but the core structure would generally be the same, is you're learning the fundamentals, you're learning and seeing how other people do it, and then finally you're implementing it yourself. Now, you can also start implementing it yourself a little bit earlier. I, I don't have any problem with that. Just personally, I like to see a little bit of structure before I really start this trying and failing and growing process. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and good luck on your data science journey.